Hey everybody, it's InnoVision. And Microsoft just announced that everyone gets the Xbox full screen experience. What they don't tell you, what's in the fine print here, is that in order to pick up the full screen experience, you have to be a Windows Insider and you have to pick it up on either the beta or dev preview update channel. Another side asterisk here is not only do you have to be subscribed to one of those update channels, it's a phase rollout. So just because you're on that channel doesn't mean you're actually gonna get the update. That means you could be sitting there for quite some time before the update ever rolls out to you. In today's video, I'll share how to get the Xbox full screen experience running on any Windows computer, whether it's your gaming laptop, your laptop, your desktop PC, or any of your gaming handhelds. Stick around, cause you don't wanna miss any of it. If you're enjoying my how-to guides and handheld related content, be sure to like the video and subscribe. That way you get that notification as soon as a new video comes out. As we get started here, I just wanna call out the preferred method for getting the Xbox full screen experience up and running would be to subscribe to either the beta or the dev preview update channel. But if it doesn't show up here, we're gonna share some steps to get it up and running. We're using a third party tool. It's from 8-Bit to Qubit's GitHub repository. And what I love about this tool you know, I've covered the Xbox full screen experience in the past. You have to use several different tools, registry keys and command line tools to get it up and running. This is a beautiful, simple program that in one click you get it up and running. And that's what I really enjoy about this. And on top of all that, if you don't like it, it gives you the ability to uninstall it. it feels a lot less like a hack and more like something that's professionally done. And so I would recommend this over some of the previous methods that we've covered in the past. For the rest of the video, I'm gonna start off by showing you an example of the Xbox full screen experience, just give you a tour of it running on this laptop right here. And then we're gonna show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to get it up and running on your PC. And then we're gonna show you how to remove it. So here I am on the Xbox full screen experience and you'll see I have a gaming laptop and I've got my controller paired and so I can just navigate with my controller. All the system processes and additional memory that's consumed by networking components that are loaded by default have been disabled because I'm using the real Xbox full screen experience here. And so let's go into a game here and just launch it just so you can see what it looks like. So while the game's launching, because my device does not have a touch screen, I can't swipe up to bring all the windows into this like cascading view, but you can hit alt tab. So swipe up is just like alt tab. And so alt tab will bring your window into focus here. If your device has a touch screen, the tool that I'm using here will actually detect that and automatically configure itself properly. So then you'd just be able to swipe up on your screen and it would bring the windows into focus like that. We've got Elden Ring fired up here. And you know, I was able to launch the game and get into it just using my controller. We're booted into the Xbox full screen experience. I will say, as I've seen in other testing on my handhelds, the Xbox full screen experience is, depending on the game, your performance might actually be worse than desktop windows. For example, I noticed that Elden Ring runs better if I start with the Windows desktop versus the Xbox full screen experience. And I also noticed that on my gaming handhelds as well. So your mileage will vary. That, that's the main reason I'm calling that out. So depending on your game, you may not see a performance improvement. You might even see a performance regression. But all in all, I'm happy that I get to test this on you know other devices besides gaming handhelds. I'm excited to see what's going to develop. I think it's also worth noting that still my experience with SteamOS is superior to this in every way. The main advantage here is if you're a player that wants to use uh, Secure Boot or you have games that have very restrictive anti-cheat then Windows is your, your only option here. So in that case, this is awesome. Me personally, I don't play too many games, if any, that require you know these strict anti-cheat. And so there's not a huge benefit for me to use Windows, but I like to still keep in the know of what's going on and I like to you know have the latest and greatest things. That way I can share it with all of you. But at the end of the day, what you choose is your own personal preference and what makes you happy and how you want to spend your time. 
but by and large this is super exciting to be able to run this on any computer here I mean look at that I'm just navigating to my game library you know, I just set up this computer recently with a fresh install Windows so I can share this so in order to enable the Xbox full screen experience on any PC whether it's a laptop like this or your gaming PC or even if it's a gaming handheld that's not yet supported or might not ever receive support the first thing we're gonna do is navigate to this github repository it's made by 8-bit to qubit we're gonna navigate to the release page and don't worry I'll provide links in the description of the video we're gonna scroll all the way down so these are the release notes in many many different languages and we're gonna go and download this installer so there's two versions of the installer the light and full we're gonna to want to grab the full version and we're gonna get this warning about hey you know this is a potentially harmful file click on see more and then go to the three dots menu here and then go to keep and it's gonna ask you do you want to delete it again and we're gonna say keep anyway and the reason being is these type of files if they are downloaded from a non-trusted source it could actually damage your computer so now that it's downloaded we're gonna open it to start the installation and we're just gonna go through the install wizard Alright, now it's done and it creates an icon on your desktop. We're going to launch it and it's saying, are you sure you want to use this? Yep. There's a couple options here. We can select the default option is the physical panel ICS. There's a couple different things that you have to keep in mind. For most users, this pre-selected option is going to be all you need. For folks that are not able to enable it, for whatever reason, you're going to have to go through some additional configuration that's listed in the GitHub repository page. That additional configuration is used to enable this toggle. For all the computers I've tested on, I haven't had to use this secondary option, but it entails disabling secure boot. This experience is gated behind a few things like the console or computer having a touch screen, having a certain resolution display. And so this tool tweaks the Windows kernel such that you can use this without having those physical characteristics about your device. So there's this other option here, start gamepad keyboard on login. So I'm not toggling that, but I could see that being useful for some people. If you made it this far, all you have to do is click enable Xbox full screen experience and it's going to go through, apply the settings and it's going to restart your computer. There's one more additional step we have to do once we log back in. We're in. So you'll notice that my laptop is going straight to the Xbox full screen experience. It didn't work like this right out of the box. What I had to do was actually adjust some settings. So if you tap the Windows key, so you'll see, you know, I'm on my laptop here and I have a Windows key right here. If I tap on that, it's going to ask me, hey, are you sure you want to go to the desktop? You're about to leave the Xbox full screen experience. And so I'm going to go ahead and click continue. And so I'm out of the Xbox full screen experience. So you'll go into this gaming section in your system settings. And there's an option now for Xbox full screen experience. That's because we use the 8-bit to qubit uh, Xbox full screen tool. And so by default, nothing will be selected here. It will be none. And so you'll have to change this to Xbox. And then you'll have to toggle on this switch to enter full screen at startup. Once you've done those two things, your computer will boot into the Xbox full screen experience just like mine did. Now, if you want to remove the Xbox full screen experience, before you uninstall the software, you'll have to click on the app here. You'll just click on this disable and restore and it'll go through and reboot your system and once you've done that you can uninstall this app if you so choose I'm just gonna keep it on mine and so now that we've set everything if we reboot we'll be prompted with the Xbox full screen experience I'm so glad I was able to share with you the technique to get the Xbox full screen experience 
running on any Windows computer. Let me know how it turned out for you. Hit me up in the comment section and let me know what your thoughts are. In several of the games I play most regularly, I've noticed that I'm taking a performance hit. I've yet to see a game where I get this huge performance gain. And that's probably because, you know, this machine has 32 gigs of RAM and a dedicated discrete GPU. Some of the tricks that the Xbox team has put together to make Windows more performant don't apply on my machine right here. They might be more relevant on a gaming handheld, but I'd be curious what everyone else's experience is. Let me know. Be sure to hit the like button on the video, hype it up and subscribe. That way you get that notification and you don't miss all the amazing toys and gaming tips we've got coming down the pipeline.